Jesus, as he walked and talked this earth, and he taught time and time again about the kingdom, right? The kingdom looks like this, and the kingdom of God is this, and the kingdom of heaven is this, and the kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. Everywhere he went, he spoke about the kingdom. But do you know one of the topics that he spoke almost more than anything else? It was on money. He talked about money an awful lot. Why? Because he knew money was tied in with the kingdom. He knew money and the kingdom were not something over here. Money's not over here and the kingdom's over here. He knew they were connected. The way we view money, the way we treat money, our viewpoint on money shows us an awful lot about our spiritual maturity. But you know what? It goes a little bit deeper. The way we talk about money, think about money, use our money, really shows us how we view God. If God is your source... It's not your job, your paycheck, or anybody else in your world. If God is your source, we have to learn how to honor God with our money. They're not separate. They're together. So I want to take a few minutes this morning. I want to talk about God and money. I know for some people it's like, oh, man. And if you're your first time here today, I'm not going to apologize because sometimes people think, well, that's all they do at church is talk about money. But it's so important because Jesus talked about it all the time. Let me show you where Jesus talked about it, especially a lot in Matthew chapter 6. Look what he said. He, he was telling his disciples, he was teaching, doing a little teaching. He said, listen, do not gather up for yourself or store up for yourselves those things of the earth that are just going to, you know, rot away and worms will consume and they'll be destroyed and thieves will break in and steal. Don't gather for stuff in your life that something's going to happen to it that it's not going to make it past this life. You see, we got our eyes focused on those things that we can acquire or those things that, that are property. Jesus is saying, hey, don't. Don't take your time and gather those things. But he said, I want you to start gathering, heaping up and storing for yourselves treasures in heaven. Now, what in the world does that look like? Well, it's not stuff you can hold. It's things in your heart. He said, I want you to gather those things up. I want you to begin to store up those treasures in heaven. And then he said this profoundly. Look what it says. For where your treasure is, there's where your heart's going to be too. You see, what you think of money, your heart follows. The old adage is true that if I was able to look at your, your bank account, look at your checkbook, look at your device that you hold your, your banking on or your money on, if I could look at it for about 15 minutes, it would probably show me where your treasure is. All of us are the same way. All of us are the same way. Where your treasure is, because where your treasure is, our heart follows. And the opposite is true. Where your heart is, then your money follows. And you can see what you're invested in and see what your priorities are and see really where your heart is. And that's what Jesus was saying. Be careful, because where your treasure is, your heart's going to follow. So this morning, I want to look at four very specific ways that we can honor God with our money. That we can put into practice, that if we begin to put these in, in our, in our relationships, in, in our finances, in all the areas that we live, if we begin to do this, it'll radically change us, and it'll, it'll break things off of us, and we'll have breakthrough in our finances. So how do we honor God with our money? The first one is this. It's simply this. Give to God first. Give God what is God's, right? We need to learn how to tithe. We need to learn what tithing is, the importance of tithing, why it honors God, why we're supposed to do those things. And it goes back to Malachi. It's an Old Testament prophet. Look what he says. Should people cheat? Who cheats God? Should anybody cheat God? Yeah, you cheated me, God was saying. He was through the, the prophet. He was saying, you guys are cheating me. The nation is cheating me. And they stepped out. What do you mean we're cheating you, God? How, how did we ever cheat you? God said, listen, you've cheated me by robbing me of the tithes and offerings that are due to me. And they're like, what? Yeah. And he said, your nation is under a curse. Your finances are under a curse because you've been cheating me all of this time. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to bring into the storehouse. Bring into the storehouse your tent. There'll be enough food there for everybody. I will open the windows of heaven. I will pour out a blessing that's big enough. You won't have room to hold it all. And then here's the only place in Scripture you'll see this, where God says, try it. Put me to the test. You see, everywhere else God says, do not trust, test the Lord. Don't test his patience. But in this one, he says, put me to the test and see if I don't come through. We must learn the value of the principle of tithing, of giving first to God, giving his first fruits, giving what, to God what is God's. 
Now, you may be saying there like, uh, I cannot tithe. Man, if I've heard that over the years so much, I, we can't afford it. We cannot afford to tithe. Well, I got news for you. You can't afford not to. And I know it might be struggle. I know it might be one of those things in my mind like, man, I just can't, I can't, I can't. Well, I want you to, I want, Ray, come on up. I, um, some of you know Ray. He's been here for many, many years. And, and Ray is the type of guy who, who was there at that time. And Ray, if you know him, his story is he was as skeptical as anybody can about this whole tithing thing. Okay? And Ray was like, uh, I don't think so. But Ray came out the other side. So Ray, tell him what you found out about tithing. Hold it up real tight. Yes, I was very skeptical. Um, I was always brought up that you just gave what you had extra. Mm. So that is what I was, and churches always want money, money, money. So I was like, no. So that is very true, and I love money, so that's very. Uh, but Alan put me to the test uh, a couple of years ago. I've been many years now. Mm -hmm. But um, about tithing, and he said, to just put it, and I said, to my wife, when we left here, I said, I'm going to use this as a savings account for us. Because I said, we'll just put our 10%, and at the end of the year, I'll get it all back from Alan because I know this is not true. <laughs> <laughs> what I did was I challenged and I'll do it again today at the end. I said, listen, if you tithe for three months, I may have made it longer. Everything you tithe, if it doesn't work and you don't see the principles of God's working, I'll give it all back. So Ray was thinking, I'll just give, and at the end of the year, I'll get it all back, and it'll be a nice big sum. Surprise, surprise, what happened, Ray? Uh, that did not work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I started tithing, my checking account was very minimum. We, we made go, but we was very minimum. Once I started tithing, and I did it great, gracefully and wanting to do it, uh, it multiplied, and it keeps multiplying. So, yes, God does work it that way. Mm -hmm. Good. It's, it's that simple. If you think you can't, you think you can't afford it, you think you won't, can't, don't, shouldn't, don't know how, Ray's the perfect example. He was as skeptical as anybody could be. He came to me and said he was. He said, this doesn't work. And if you're in that same boat, you say, uh, we can't, I, it, it won't matter, it won't. Listen, if you begin to do it God's way, it's all about obedience, really it is. It's not about giving you church. Listen, does God need your money? God doesn't need your money. So why does he ask us to participate? Why does he ask us to partner with him? Because he knows it's about your heart. He knows it's about a heart issue. If you're not willing to give him 10%, then you have to look at your heart. Where's your heart? Because your heart will always follow your treasure. And Ray found that out. That God is trustworthy. And he put him to the test. And he came through. First area we need to start this year, give Dodd your tithe. And if you're sitting there going like, uh, it's going to be a challenge. I told you, you'll be challenged, but go there and you'll see God come through. Second area is not just the tithing area, but this, pay your bills. Woo! Isn't that something special? I mean, but a lot of people struggle with this. Pay your bills. You know what paying your bills is? It's saying that you are trustworthy. It's saying that you're able to handle even the small things. It's saying that, that you have integrity. It's saying that as a God person, a follower of Jesus, that you're somebody who can be trusted. Pay your bills. Romans 13, look what it says. Give to everyone what you owe them. Let's read that together because that's important. You ready? Give. Why? Well, yeah, some of you are like, oh, I don't like that. I'm not telling you if you like it or not. There it says it. God says what? Give to everyone what you owe them. Pay your bills. Now, here's the next part that, that gets us, right? Look at that next line. Isn't that great? We're coming up to tax season. Pay your taxes. <laughs> Woo! We should be excited about it. Why? Because God says so. He's not trying, listen, if you have the mindset God is always trying to take from you or always trying to rob you of your joy and always trying to take things away from you, you've got it backwards. He is a giver. That's who God is at his heart. For God so loved the world that he what? He gave. It's his heart to give. He wants to give you an abundant life. But it starts with your money. If you could get your money right, a lot of other things will happen. A lot of other things will flow out of that because where your treasure is your heart follows. 
Look what it says, pay your taxes. And here's the part that I really want to hammer on because I, I've been guilty of this and I'm changing, I'm different. Have you ever walked into a place to pay a government fee? Have you ever gone into a courthouse? Okay, you had to buy a permit, you had to build a sign permit, or you had to have a land permit, or you were getting married, you had to pay a fee. And everywhere, everywhere you go, there's these darn fees. Well, guess what? Those people that, that stand behind those counters, do you know what they hear every single day? grumping and complaining and fussing and moaning. And the body of Christ, the people of Jesus should not be that way. Look what it says. Pay your taxes and government fees to those who collect them. I want you to do something. The next time you have to go in to get a fee, the next time you have to go in to get a permit to build something, the next time you want to put a sign up and you have to go in, I want you to go in with a big old smile and say, man, here's my money. I love to give it to you. Not out of some fakeness, but exactly what this says. Look, and give respect and honor to those who are in authority. That person behind the counter is in authority. We're supposed to honor and respect them, not grumble and complain because they're taking your money. Now, see, we got it backwards. See, your treasure, your heart, it all flows. And if you don't have it in the right way, and if it's not flowing the right way, you will get angry when you have to pay all these fees. Now, I, I don't like to just pay things just for the sake of paying them. But pay your bills. Pay your bills. Owe nothing to anyone except your obligation of love. Take a look at this next scripture. It goes along with this. Luke 16. I, I love this because Jesus, again, is bringing it. Treasure, money, money, treasure. Look what he says. He who is faithful in a little thing is faithful also in much. If you're faithful with the little things that he's assigned to you right now and giving you opportunity and responsibility for right now, if you're faithful in that, he'll increase it. But look what it also says. If you're not faithful with the small things, he's not going to give you the big things. Therefore, if you've not been faithful with the unrighteous things, the way you treat your money, how will he give you the true riches? See, how do you handle your money? We think money's over here. And the kingdom's over here, and they never connect. Oh, they're connected. How you handle your money shows you really your heart. And if you're faithful with the, the money that he's given you now, down the road, years from now, he may entrust you with greater riches. I'm not saying you'll be a millionaire. To, I'm just saying there'll be even greater riches that he is waiting for you. Tithing. Pay your bills. Number three, there's also something we need to do. And here's something that's hard for somebody, and I want us to say it together. Are you ready? Live off the rest. Why is this something that's so hard? Or why is this something that we even have to talk about? Here's a statistic I read this week that blew me out of the water. Did you know that 17% of all the families in America spend more than they bring in on a regular basis? Now, 17% to you may not be a big number, but it is if you're sitting out there and you're one of the 17%. 17%. And that's... that's all across the board, but you don't think there's, there's followers of Jesus in that? Of course there are. That should not be. We have to learn to live off the rest. Hebrews 13 says this, what? Don't love money. Ray was standing up here saying, I love money. That was who Ray was. That was his truth. He was truth. But he found out that money is not something to love necessarily. It's something to be used. It's a tool. And God can use it toward his kingdom. Don't love money. Be satisfied with what you have. Live off the rest. How many of you, when you get a raise, you spend more? Da! If God has blessed you with a raise, why can't you live off what you've been living off of for however long and take that and pay your bills or save something or, or something you want down the road that you can pay for cash or a new car for cash or if you need to go on vacation? Those things are okay, but why do we increase our spending when we increase our income? Be content with what you have. I love how God puts it. Look, at he's talking about money. And then what does he bring in in the end? God then says, I'll never fail you. I'll never, I'll never abandon you. That seems like a whole separate issue, doesn't it? But it's not. They're connected. How we look at money and how we look at life are connected. God says, tithe. Pay your bills. Live off the rest. And the fourth one is this. Get out of debt. Now, I know for a lot of people, you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. And sometimes we have debt. Listen, I, I cringe sometimes because we have debt here at the church. We have debt. And, and, and you know what? Over the years, we've, 
We've lost people who have come and said, you have debt. I'm not, I can't be a part of that church because God says we don't have any debt. I'm like, I, I, I can't pay the debt. It's not my responsibility to pay the debt. Oh, it's God's. Now, maybe I get into it. I don't know. But God provided us a building and he provided, and we had to get a mortgage and we did those things. But as part of God honoring and being part of money, we have to learn how to get out of debt. We have to make it a goal. Proverbs 22 says this, just as the rich rule over the poor, the borrow is servant to the lender. Now, I bet you most of us know this experience. You go into a bank, right, and you sit down across from somebody and say, I need money for a house, or I need money for a car, or I need money to reduce something, and, and so they get the papers out, and you sign your name, right? Well, guess what? They're going to get their money, right? That's what it's saying. The borrower us, you, me, is servant to the lender because they have a, a commitment and they're going to get theirs. And sometimes at the expense of that, we've done a lot of crazy things and we stop giving to God. Oh, I can't. I have to pay my mortgage. Well, maybe the mortgage is too big or maybe the car payment's too big or maybe the truck payment's too big and maybe it's time to really take a look at priorities and how do we do away with that so we can honor God and so we can pay our bills. And that's the hard part of God and money and honoring God with our money. If we're in over our head, then it's time to look at what can we get rid of in order to meet our obligations, in order to do it God's way. Tithing, paying our bills, getting out of debt. It's part of who God is, part of he wants with us. If you're going to be a follower of Jesus, then we have to learn to do it his way. We have to work toward this goal. Autumn, you can come. I want to finish with this. You know what it really is about? It's not about talking about money so much, and it's not about, oh, here we are going over this whole thing again. You know what it's really about? It's about obedience. Think about it. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll what? Obey me. That's what he said. If you love me, you'll obey me. So now when it comes to the area of money, he says, I want you to honor me by giving me your tithes, 10%. You get to live off 90. Pretty good deal. But if we can't even do that, isn't that a lack of obedience? And then it really goes down to, does it show us our love for Jesus when he's, when he's asking this from us? It's a matter of obedience. And, and we've said it before, God doesn't need your money. But he's asking you to participate in that. And one more thing, I, I just want before we do this last song. Some of you, and, and, and I know it's, it's true, and, and, and this is where you're at, and you have to wrestle with it, with you and God. Some of you are like, right, it used to be, you, you'd just, you'd give a little bit, right? Yeah, every now and then you give a little bit. Your income goes up, but you keep it the same. Or here's the better trick, we've seen this over the years, it's like last week, you know, we, we lost a Sunday here, and some people think, well, that's just a free Sunday. Right? Have you ever been there? Ever been? Oh, I get to keep my tithe this week. Yeah, there was no church. Is that being obedient? So I really want to challenge you. If you're sitting here and you haven't been a giver, you don't know how to give, what to give, start with 10%. Don't let that limit you. Go 15, 20. Go for it. Give 90 and live off 10. Yay! <laughs> so you're like, now he's really flipped, okay? It's okay. Be obedient to what God is telling you. Why? Because you can never outgive God. God. You can't. So I'll give you this challenge. If you're here, if you're fairly new or you've been here a while and you're not a tither, start tithing now. We'll give you the three-month challenge. In three months, if you don't start seeing something shift in your life, in your finances, or as you're being obedient to God, I'll give you your three months tithe back. I will. Money back guaranteed. Now, I might have to be like the government and come to the rest of you and ask for more money to give them back. <laughs> but I believe in trusting God. He's never failed in 20 years. So if you're here, this is a matter of obedience. This is a matter of you honoring God with your money. Let's start to give. And, and, and here's the neat part. And I've seen it, I've heard it, and I know it's true, not just this church, other church, most churches that the percentage of people who actually tithe within the churches is very low. It's true. And I, I'll confess to you, and I, I have never in 20 years, I've never looked at anybody's giving. I don't know what you give. I've never looked at what you give. I don't want to look what you give. 
I don't go and say, oh, Dan, he doesn't give very much. Oh, what does Dan give? Oh, and then I have a conversation. Dan, you're not giving very much. It's you and God, and it's about immediate, uh, obedience. It's about being faithful to him and watching him work out in your life. And maybe you'll discover some of the other areas of your life that aren't kind of flowing right. If you get the giving part right, he can trust you with some of these other things, and you'll see a flow. All right? So guess what we're going to do next? We're going to give. You should be clapping now. And you know what? Uh, you know why we have, uh, for those who are fairly new, why we have the baskets over here and why we make you get up and give? Because you know what? I think giving is every bit as much part of worship. Worship is giving. Giving is worship. So is praying. It's, it's all wrapped. It, there's not giving over here and worship more spiritual over here. It's all part of the same heart. You say, well, I'm a worshiper. Woo! I'm a prayer. Woo! Oh, I don't give. My, I can't. Huh? Ah! Doesn't make sense. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to open up, okay, as we do this last song, we're opening up our baskets, okay? And, and please, don't have a stampede. Give people room and space as you're bringing your ties, okay? And some of you may going to have to catch up for the last couple weeks or months. You, know, you haven't been tithing, okay? We'll take credit card. We'll do whatever we need to do. We don't want you to go in debt, though. So, so. so you come and give. Be faithful. Ask God to bless it and to multiply it. And then ask God to bless you, because he will. Trust him. Test him. See if he'll do it. Okay? So stand to your feet. Get your money out. And run to the baskets.